Thank you. Well, we're a very busy church at the moment, aren't we, with a lot going on. And my husband Brent is in um, America today. We'll be back on Wednesday and doing very, very well. Um, uh, I do miss him, I know. <laughs> I really do. <laughs> but when he goes, it's kind of like quite a... Um, it's yes, a little bit of peace and just a little. <laughs> Thank you, Beresford. <laughs> but, um, and and I know he'd love to be here this morning. He always comes back and says about how he loves the worship, he loves the atmosphere, he loves the presence that seems to imbibe this place, and it does. It's the presence of the living God, I know. And he would have loved this morning with all you girls, but we're having you up at the end, and hopefully, um, when he is home. But I have taken my message from the book of Acts in chapter 24 when Paul was describing an experience he had with God. He had an encounter. He had something that he never forgot. And he was talking about it to the kings, especially to King Agrippa, which is where my message will end. And he described a light that came in the daytime, not at night, in the daytime, a light brighter than the sun. I thought, oh my goodness, why did I always think Paul was walking on a dark road? He was walking in the daytime, and a light came from the heavens brighter than the sun. The light was outshining the sun, it says in the New Message Bible. You know what the summer sun is like in New Zealand at the moment. In the New Message Bible, it says that the light that came from heaven and shone on him was outshining that summer sun. This is in Israel. It was probably even hotter here. And I thought about that, and I thought about how that's what I want. I don't have it, have it as dramatic as that, but I want that light that shines on our church here at Encounter, on the decisions we make, on the paths in life we make. And I believe, and I know, that if God can take someone like Paul, who didn't even have a heart for God, and shone a light on him that outshone the very sun on that day, he can and he will and he wants to do it for every one of us in this place. One of the things that I enjoy when we have new people at Encounter here, which we're having at the moment, and I'll be there at 430 this afternoon to, to um, work with Emily and just present something about encounter. But one thing I love is when we just look back at the history of this church, because we have a history, and I believe that God has shone that light on the path of Encounter Christian Center so that the decisions we have made have brought blessing to people, brought life to people, and we have, as a church, done some amazing, amazing things. He's shone on us. He's shown us, hey, this is what I want. And we've heard his voice in those moments. Because Paul didn't only see this light, but he heard this voice from heaven. And we have been intentional about hearing God's voice for what we do here at this church. We've built on a past where we have had a past that we believe God has shone his light on, we don't discard that because we get tired of it. We build on it because that is where we know and feel and can see the evident blessing of God. And so through my message today, I'm going to thread something about where I believe God has shown us in the past that we are to continually build on, and that is in the area of mission. And it's lovely to have two great missionaries here this morning on this day. Because, you know, when I first came to this church, 
my two children, Marissa and Reuben, were just little. And I used to hear this man come to the church every year. His name was Lindsay Christie. And he'd talk about the revival that was happening in the Argentine, that him and his wife, Denise, who visits us still, used to see thousands come to the Lord. We sent one of our girls over to help them with their newspaper thing that they put out. She was the first missionary that we were responsible for sending to this church into Bogota. Every year he would come. He'd talk about this, and he'd talk about the things that they didn't have, like a lot of money, and I'm like, oh dear, we've got to send more money over there so he can feed his family. And he'd talk about how that it was a dangerous lifestyle and they were attacked at gunpoint. And we've heard Denise give that story. And it was incredible. It was like when we took over leading, I said to Brent, we've got to build on this because this is, this is amazing that, that a young couple went from this church and had, had such an effect on another country like that. When we got to visit over there, finally, to the work that Lindsay and Denise established, yes, I did go to nine schools that he'd built, that Encounter back in the day had given money for. These were not um, in rich areas. This was the poorest of the poorest. And yes, I did go to where he set his first mission station up, which was in one of the worst parts, if not the worst part of the world I have ever been to, which every exit from that block had a tank on it um, with a military tank to keep the people in, I think is what it was. This was where the, all the drug trade and everything like that. I thought, this is where he went. This is what he did. This is part of our history at Encounter that we just cannot ignore. We must build on it. We must be mindful that God said, you go to these places. And to this day, Denise Christie, who's now in her 70s, if not a little bit older, I can never judge people of that age because I think I'm still in my 30s, so there you go. Um, <laughs> we were there when she was honoured by the Prime Minister as the mother of the nation because of their reputation. Come on, church, give God some praise in this place. Next week, we're going to present what is the vision overseas with the trips that Simeon is going to be taking and leading with the ones that Brent is going to be doing back to Vietnam and all these things as well. But for now, I'm going to focus on what we can do here in Encounter with the opportunities God has given us, both in Avondale and in our church plants. But before I do that, I've been impressed this year, watching briefly on television, without Brent monopolizing, um, what was our Waitangi Day event. And realizing it's 180 years since this happened in our country. Our country has a history. Our country has a history that we have inherited without being active in what happened 180 years ago. Our country has a history. There are people today, two nations. Our future depends on the continual uniting in kindness and care towards one another was quoted there. I thought, that's awesome. That's awesome. That's awesome. I like that. Our country has a history. Our church has a history. God knows our history. He tells us in Revelation 1, verse 8, I'm the Alpha and the Omega. I am the beginning, I am the end, I am the one who was, who is, and who is to come. So he's interested in our history. He's very interested in this moment in time for you, and he's very interested about what is to come. And I believe, just as I have felt and known, that that light, that out shines the sun, 
has shone on in Counter's history and blessed us in phenomenal ways, that in this present moment, this year of 2020, when Kerry Robertson came here and said to us, this is going to be a fabulous year for you, Encounter, and we haven't forgotten it, and when I saw so many of you being bought the word of the Lord from Rory and Phalene and how accurate all that was, I was like, whoa, this really is going to be a great year, 2020. I could see that light shining on that person and that person and that person and that person. And Monday night when we had our leaders meeting and we had a little bit more time because Brent wasn't here and there was more time for our leaders to talk about what was in their hearts, I thought, my goodness, that light has shone on that person they are passionate about bringing people into a dynamic encounter with Jesus Christ at absolutely every level. And I want to thank you. And I want to say you're a great bunch of people. I want to thank you that you understand the vision. I want to thank you that this year you want that light to shine on our church like never before. That yes, yes you do. And that you want that light that comes from heaven that outshines the sun to shine on you and the gifts of God has been placed on your life so that this year of 2020 marks a year like no other where you see lives changed in the name of Jesus. I have a little fan club. Thank you. <laughs> oh, my goodness. So, very practically speaking, we have some things that we're going to talk about now that we can do in a local sense, in Avondale, out, out our very gate, and also in Levin and in Breen Bay. And for that, I'm going to ask Simeon to come up and speak to us. Simeon is our missions director, not only for in New Zealand here, but also overseas. He's, he's on at my family tree. Somehow, he's, you remember my cousin David McKenzie, that's his cousin, so there we go. So if you hear him call me sometimes Auntie Pat, that's okay, you'll understand, okay? So it goes back a long way. Simeon, you do awesomely, you do so much, um, in, incredible passion, and tell us what, we, what is coming up for this year. Thank you, Simeon. Okay, could so, sometimes he forgets things, but that's okay. <laughs> Sorry about that. <laughs> um, so I just wanted to share my vision for Encounter Missions. So my vision is to participate and support the advancement of the kingdom of God through bringing salvations, healings, miracles, and signs and wonders into Avondale, Green Bay, Levin, and the surrounding areas. It is to inspire people, team members, <clears throat> to um, be passionate for the demonstration of the power of Christ so that we can see um, people's lives changed from that encounter from Jesus Christ. It will forever change their lives. And this is what true advancement of the kingdom is all about. Because in 1 Corinthians 2, 4, Paul says, my message and my preaching was not with persuasive words, but with the demonstration of the power of yep. the Spirit. Very good, Simeon. So that's what Very we're all good. about here at Encounter. So um, we have um, a few initiatives that we're doing. Um, and that is the first one I just want to talk about is walk, talk, and pray. So with walk, talk, and pray, basically we're just going out and we're evangelizing and we're sharing the gospel and praying for people for their needs in the streets. And Heather is an awesome uh, walk, talk, and pray advocate. She goes out every week and shares. So basically, um, this is on a Sunday, and they meet at the Spider in Avondale at 12.45 um, after church. So if you want to get involved with that, you can meet her um, after church today there. She, she should be there. She will be there. Um, and the other thing is, there's a few things here. There's the Riversdale Soccer Outreach. Now, this is um, something we've been doing for two years, and this is the third year. And um, Noah and Melissa have been doing a barbecue there, um, doing free bar uh, 
sausage sizzle, so people come up, and that's a, an opening point for people to connect. And so we do um, praying for people there. We've got a sign on our tent that says healing and prayer tent. So anyone that gets injured in the soccer, they can come and get prayer for their injuries. <laughs> and we also, you know, our passion there is also to just to go out and, and just talk to people in that surrounding area and to share the gospel and pray for miracles. Um, so if you want to get involved there, we're really keen to get more people in there. So that starts on the 4th of April. Um, and the other thing is the Feed the Streets. Now, this is an initiative, it's a community initiative where um, we're feeding the poor people in the streets. And um, so we've got um, some more information there. Um, Melissa knows all about that. So um, if you're interested in that, um, we can talk to her. Um, and we've, got, we've also got, um, oh, actually, I'll, I'll say that at the end where you can get more information. But the next thing is Green Bay. We're doing trips to Green Bay and Levin. So we're going to be doing a trip on the 6th and the 8th, 6th to 8th of um, March at, for Green Bay. And then in Levin, we're going 24th to the 27th of April. And then, um, so another thing that I'm sharing about here is that once a month, we do a missions and, and prayer and planning kind of meeting. And that's basically the, the last Tuesday of every month. And I'll be putting that up in our Encounter Missions Facebook page which you can join up to, and um, we'll in, um, add you to that. And so we have um, uh, our text number, which is the 5863 number. You can actually text MISSIONS to that number, and then it will send you a, f uh, a link that you can go to on your mobile phone, and you can fill out what areas of interest you have, and then we'll get in touch with you, if, um, you know, giving you more information if, if you need that and we'll connect you into the right places there. So that's, um, and after the service, I'll be over in the information desk area, so we can, you know, if you've got questions, you can ask me there. Thank so, you, yeah. Simeon. Thanks. Thank you. Well done, Simeon. Well done. <laughs> we are intentional about our history, where we came from, what God has blessed, and God has certainly blessed the initiatives of outreach that we have done from Encounter Here. I want to go back to talking about Paul. It is so impressive to me how that a man on a certain pathway in life was one that he chose. And Paul, when he was doing what he was doing, he had no God there, he had no love had no concern for people. He was actually actively working against God by busting into people's connect groups or into church meetings like this that the Christians at the day were having and arresting people, trying to get them to deny Jesus Christ, doing all sorts of things, putting them in prison, all sorts of things, and just trying to do everything he could to destabilize the church of the day. And this was his life. This was his lifestyle. This was his path. Now I know that before me, there's nobody here this morning on that path. But what is your path? What is your path? Have you got God on your path? Because without him, you won't care for people the same. You won't love people the same. You won't speak to people using the Holy Spirit the same. It'll be very different. And you may not have actually thought about it. It's okay because Paul had not thought about it and God jolly well knew that. You may not have thought about it. You may not have really thought, is God really walking this walk with me? Is he beside me today? Is he, is, he, is he with me on this path, on this life's journey? Or are you just going along doing your own thing, much as Paul was doing on a normal summer day? Because there is a light that outshines the sun that can come on to your path that will literally change everything in every situation. 
Sometimes we call it revelation, sometimes we call it all sorts of things. But I've gone very visual today, and I believe that there is a light that outshines the sun that can spot us whenever we get in a point of our lives that we've left God somewhere else. That's all God was doing, was getting with Paul on his life's journey. It says Paul tried to describe it. He went before a couple of the people, the kings, who were, who were accusing him, the Jewish leaders, of various things. And he eventually came before the king Agrippa. And it tells us there in Acts chapter 26, verse 12, Paul describes how he was walking along the Damascus Road. He was armed with official papers from the high priests so that he could arrest people, so that he could do what he was trained and obviously paid to do, a wealthy man. And he describes how in the middle of that day, in the middle of just going along, doing his normal thing, a light shone that outshone the sun on him. It was so powerful and so bright, he fell to his face. All the others with him fell to their faces because this light had come from heaven, never been seen by any of them before. And the voice came and said, Saul, Saul, why are you doing this to me? And Paul said, who are you? Where is this voice from heaven coming from? Who are you? The voice said, I am Jesus, the one you are hurting. Every time we take a step without Jesus and God beside us, we are actually hurting him. He wants to walk this life's path with us every day, all the time. He wants to. Paul was after hurting the church. But we hurt God when we leave him out. We hurt him. He wants to walk with us. And Jesus was a voice. God was very specific to Paul. He didn't condemn him for any of the things that he had done at all and, or try to do anything with him. He had instructions for Paul. These instructions are going to ring true for us here at Encounter in this year of 2020. He had instructions for Paul, which Paul obeyed. The voice said, God said to him, be up on your feet. I have got a job for you. A job. I've chosen you to be a servant and a witness to what's happened today and what I am going to show you. And this is exactly what he said to King Agrippa. You can read it in the New Message Bible. Get up. I've got a job for you. I have chosen you. You're to be a witness of the things that have happened and the things that are to come. Encounter, it's our year for that. We've heard it prophesied. We've heard it said. Simeon's given practical things. Be up. There's a job for us. You're all chosen. I've chosen you, says God, to be my witness for what has happened in the past in your life, in your ministry, in this church, and what is to happen in the year to come. All this was said to him while there was a light outshining the sun. Isn't that awesome? Isn't that awesome? Hallelujah. Isn't that awesome? God, wow, wow, wow. Once that light came that was brighter than the sun, it stopped Paul right in his tracks. When the voice was there, it changed his path, and he was now on God's path. I'm always surprised at how that happened, because I wouldn't have thought Paul by nature would have been a person who would easily have been told what to do by anybody if he didn't want to. And yet such was that moment when God was there with a light that outshone the sun and the voice of command that said, get up, you've got a job to do. 
You have been chosen by me. You're to witness. And he did. He didn't argue. He could have just as easy got up and went right on his way. But in that moment, he made a decision which we all make and need to make all the time. That the, that the lifestyle we live, God wants to be right there with us, walking with us, talking with us, shining his light where it's needed. You know, the lifestyle of Paul would have been successful. He would have been a career man. He would have been honored. He would have been feared. He would have had a lot of money. He was his own big boss. He would have had his own big ideas. Paul chose to leave all that. There was no job security. There was an uncertain future ahead of him for what he'd done historically and what he was now going to do for God. He left the whole lot and allowed God to come into his world and make a huge change as it was to happen. You know, I want that light every day of my life. I want that light on my path. I want that voice to be reminding me that even though I'm 30, I'm not going to be here forever. <laughs> that I have got a job to do. That I'm chosen by God. And that I've got things and people that I still must reach and things that people need to be prayed for and to be set free and to be delivered and to come to know this Jesus Christ as Lord. And I want that light to be constantly somehow around me. I want that voice to be encouraging me and commanding me when I don't feel so good. Get up. You have got a job to do. I've called you. I've chosen you. You're to witness. You're to be my witness. This is what Paul said. This is what I like. This is what I want. You know, I've never yet seen a great light come from the sky like the sun. Saw a beautiful moon on Friday night. Outside I was. The show must go on. Uh, we are the champions, some of those beautiful anthems. Oh, my gosh. Oh, my gosh. Brian May was there, oh, a rock legend. I know. I was with the young crowd, Ellie and my daughter-in-law, Michaela, stand up. That's who I was rocking with on Friday night. Stand up, girls. Look at them. Aren't they beautiful? There they go. They let me come with them. There they go. I was with the young crowd, yeah. <laughs> Son Andre was there taking care of things. There, but uh, the poor, I diverted, didn't I? But anyway, I met an old friend. You would remember um, uh, Julia's sister. Uh, no, Brenda's sister. Julia was there. And she said that I've still got it, whatever it is. So there we go. <laughs> so I rocked right on in. And as we sat there to this beautiful, oh, exquisite music, there the moon arose. Oh, I thought, and I knew I was going to preach about the sun, brighter than the, the light, brighter than the sun. I thought, I wonder, is that a sign? Is that moon just going to get brighter and brighter and brighter and shine out here on us all more than these lights? But it didn't. You know, I've given God a few tries to, to shine a massive light on me that I'd go blind for three days. I don't care if I'm off God's path. I don't care. He could do it if he wants could do anything. I've waited for a voice to come from heaven, but it's never done that. It's come into my heart, and the things that I've seen have been in my mind and my spirit, but I've seen nothing like this. But hey, this message of what changed Paul from one thing to the other, and what caused him to do walk, talk, and pray, and go up to the soccer field, so to speak, and do the feed the streets and everything else, was absolutely supernatural. And I want us to be able to experience that. But I find that there is light shone into my situations when I need it. There are words that are spoken to me that sometimes I need, and it doesn't matter where I am. I've got people I can talk to inside this church and outside this church but just sometimes it doesn't work out. They're busy or something like that. I'm going to tell you 
One experience I had last year, the end of last year, I went with someone to do something and it just was not working out. It was a waste of time, we drove a distance, came back and it had seemed a waste of time and the whole situation was frustrating and I could see no good coming of it, I couldn't see God in it and so for two hours I managed to rant and rave in a car as we drove along. On a track I was, I don't know if God was there but I didn't care. I was saying some things. I don't know if a lot of love was there. I didn't care about that either. I was going along. And I went to a part of Auckland I never go to um, at East Auckland because one of my sons was taking a boat out with another son and someone in this church, three of them, in fairly rough conditions. It's now about six o'clock at night. They've waited for me to bring my other son and there we were at the car park and so some were in there shopping and my youngest son Andre was with his boat. I said this is not good conditions out here and if you can read my body language I'm already worked up over something else I'm just telling you warning you I'm still the mother of the family I'm just saying I said, you, you'll get my body language, so, so could you show me what you've got here for safety, because I don't want anything bad to happen either to you, your brother, or your friend, especially your friend. And um, so I said, so what have you got here? This is rough conditions. You're going out, you're sleeping on an island for two nights. So he said he had some e perby thing or some GPS or some other thing. I said, well, show me the life jackets. Would you believe there are only two? So right there, we started a little talk that was becoming interesting to the bystanders. Let me say, Brent would never go out on a boat without life jackets for every person. And a car drove up. One of the ladies from this church said, Patricia, what are you doing out here? So I started to say that they were going out in a boat, two of my sons and a friend, with two life jackets and there were three of them and I regarded it as irresponsible and I was just informing my son about it. And she said, oh, hop in the car, she said. We've got life jackets at our place. While they're doing their shopping, come to my house and my husband will get you a life jacket for the third one and then you'll be all right. Well, I said, I might be. That's good, lovely. And in the car, she said, why are you here? And I was able to tell her. And she said, I know what you're talking about. I've been through that exact situation. I know what you're talking about. In confidence and with someone who understood, I was able to get some light on that path, different light. I was able to hear some words from someone I had not thought to speak to who spoke some words that have stuck with me to this very day. This is what I'm talking about, people. It's not supernatural like what happened to Paul, with a light that shines brighter than the sun and a voice booming out of heaven. So everyone's flat on their face with the shock of it all, but it is us who do it for each other. It is us who find that moment to speak and say, this is going to be okay. To bring words of hope, to bring God's word into situations that are troubling and difficult for us. This is a work of encounter and it goes on and on and on. And all of you who are involved in ministering at this level to people are to be thanked for it because it makes the world of difference, let me tell you. God uses each of us, each one of us that actually have him on our path, are able to speak words of comfort, words of hope, and bring light into situations where it's needed. Isn't that wonderful? See, God was, it says in Revelation, and he is, and he is to come. And let me just tell you here, 
Your future here, your future with God in your path is dependent on having God with you on your path at all times. I am telling you, if I'd come back from the way I was feeling that particular day, the trajectory path of the situation might not be going to turn out as I believe God that it will. Because we cannot walk into situations without him right there. And if I'd left that path with him on this situation, I may have done it on another. And it took a gentle voice in a private car to bring light and to bring the word of God to me. You know, Paul left so much. And at times, to have a lifestyle that has God by our side may not bring the biggest wealth to us, may not mean more money. It may not mean that life will be as comfortable. And for Paul, it certainly was not. He went from this moment of speaking with King Agrippa, was put onto a ship and shipwrecked out on that island of Malta there. It was a dreadful experience. He could not say that was a luxury liner cruise by any means. He didn't go for comfort. He didn't go for money. He didn't care about those things. All he cared about was that he had a God more powerful than any circumstance, that he had a God with a name above every other name, and that he had a God whose life he had given completely and utterly into his hands for the work of the kingdom. Come on, give some praise in this place here today. <clears throat> Paul knew what he was talking about. That voice that said, get up, you've got a job to do, I've chosen you, you need to go, you need to do what I'm talking about here. And he went on what I would call a five-point mission. And Paul, in Acts chapter 24, in the New Message Bible, which is where I'm going to be quoting this from because it brings us into everyday language. Paul was intent every day of his life from that moment on in doing these things. The five-point mission almost involved the whole five-fold ministry that just developed around him in that instant. Isn't that awesome? Isn't that awesome? Yes, Paul said to Agrippa, this is what God told me to do. This is why I'm being um, accused of, because God told me to do this, and I do it every day of my life. God said to me, I'm sending you off, number one, to open the eyes of people outside so they can see the difference between dark and light and choose light. That's pretty supernatural. Paul knew what he was talking about. He had come to that point in his life where light had come and the darkness in his life he had chosen to walk away from. He did not look back. He did not go back to our, his past, back to the dark parts of his past. He continued to walk on that path of light because he carried the light giver with him from that day forward. Number two, he told King Agrippa that the voice said to him, God said to him, I'm sending you off so people see the difference between Satan and God and choose God. The people saw a difference immediately in Paul. He was a totally different man. And my challenge to you today is, in any situation, you can be totally different. You can choose God over the enemy, and you can walk in that way, and everybody will know it. Everybody will see it. This is a man of God. This is a woman of God. And if you choose that, then others will see it also. Number three, Paul said to Agrippa, I'm sending you off, this is what God told Paul, to present my offer of forgiveness to all people. This is offered. Paul was forgiven in that instant. He never looked back on his old life. He never held grudges. He was completely set free 
by the power of the living God. Never went back for, to these old paths. Number four, he said to Agrippa that the God said to him, I'm sending you off to help people find a place in the family, a place where value is given. This sounds to me like our connect groups, doesn't it? Sounds very much like our connect groups, doesn't it? When people come and join in, share their lives with others, and help through situations, find a place in the family. Help people find a place in the family. This was his mission. This was what he was about. The fifth one, he said to King Agrippa, God said, I'm sending you off to invite them into the company of those who begin real living by believing in me. That, to me, sounds like bringing people to encounter, doesn't it? I'm, he's doing that. I'm going to be bringing them to be with other believers who find real living in the company of the church. I was astounded. I thought when I looked at this, I thought, this is what we're all about. This is why we do walk, talk, and pray. This is why we outreach on our streets. This is why we support our church plants in Encounter Levin and Encounter Bream Bay, so that they too may have this as part of their ongoing life. We go down there to help them. Why we go up to the soccer field and why we invite people all the time to come, so that they may see the difference between light and darkness. They may know the difference between God and Satan that they may find a place in this family and be with other believers where life begins. I'm going to ask our music team up. We're going to sing You Reign Above It All. And this morning, church, I'm just going to speak to your hearts here in my closing moments because I know how powerful a small ride in a car was with someone when I least expected it how it got me back on the God path where there was hope, where I could pray with faith again, where I knew that God was the answer and the only answer to every situation. And this morning, as we're worshipping here in these final moments, you will know if you've ever had God on your path. Or maybe you don't actually want Him there in case He asks you to do something you don't want. I don't know. We have all sorts of funny things go through our head. But I'm telling you, when that light that shone brighter than the sun hit Paul on that road to Damascus, he wasn't asking questions of God. When he heard that voice say, I have chosen you, he wasn't asking for a 10-year plan or any detail. He was on God's path and God led him every step of the way right through those gospels till the very end of his life where he could stand and say, I have run this race. I have fought the fight. Therefore, there is laid up a crown of righteousness for me, but not only for me, but for every person who knows Jesus Christ as Lord. There, oh my goodness, come Holy Spirit. Come Holy Spirit. Come Holy Spirit. Church, just stand with me just as we pray. I, I think this is the only time I've felt like weeping on the stage, but I know that there are some of you here that needed this today, that needed this message. You need God on your path. You need someone to stand with you today and speak some words of hope into your situation. You need someone who's going to bring light to you where there has been absolute darkness. 
hopelessness and despair, where you may have even doubted God, you need God on your path. And just as we're worshipping here, I'm going to open the front and ask if you want to just step forward and our pastors will come and pray with you this morning, stand with you, bring words of hope to you so that once again you can get onto God's path, which will make all the difference. If you want to keep private what this is, you're welcome. You can share with our pastors that confidential. But I do believe that there are some who this message has touched you. You want someone to stand with you, speak words of hope and pray for you. This is your moment to step forward. Come on, Melissa, you sing. We'll all sing. Come on, choir.